Have you been to Boston? Hmm? I have on many occasions once to visit Emerson. Strange old Boston with its zigzag streets, its multitudinous angles. Crush up a piece of letter paper in your hand, throw it down, stamp it flat with your foot, <laughs> and there you have a map of Boston. I've spent a good deal of time walking along the Boston Common. I know all of the old trees along Tremont and Beacon Streets, and oh, I've come to a sociable, silent understanding with most of them. Between these same elms, I walked for two hours one bright, clear February morning with Emerson. Now, during this walk, he was the talker, I was the listener. His talk was an argument. In fact, it was an outright attack against the construction of my poems, especially Children of Adam. Now, in those poems, I wanted to celebrate the human body, the male and female form and function. I felt it necessary to describe the body and its parts in full. For instance, this is the female form. A divine nimbus exhales from it from head to foot. It attracts with fierce, undeniable attraction. I am drawn by its breath as if I were no more than a helpless vapor. All falls aside but myself and it. Books, art, religion, time, the visible and solid earth, and all that was expected of heaven or feared of hell are now consumed. Mad filaments, ungovernable shoots play out of it, the response likewise ungovernable. Hair, bosom, hips, bend of legs, negligent falling hands, all diffused, mind too diffused, ebb stung by the flow, and flow stung by the ebb, love, flesh, swelling and deliciously aching, limitless, limpid jets of love, hot and enormous, quivering jelly of love, white blow and delirious juice, bridegroom night of love, working surely and softly into the prostrate dawn, undulating into the willing and yielding day, lost in the cleave of the clasping and sweet flesh day. <sighs> well, <laughs> I described the female form too fully, Emerson seemed to think, and he wasn't alone. He urged me to drop several passages. By doing so, he said that I would appeal to a wider audience, quiet the critics who called me obscene, and allow all that was good about leaves of grass to shine through. Advice. Well, what have you to say to such things, Walt? He asked. Well, I can't answer them all, but I feel more settled than ever to adhere to my own theories and to exemplify them. Saying those words to him were more precious than gold to me, though I could never hear the points better put. I felt down in my soul the utmost conviction to destroy all and to pursue my own way. Censor, no. I want the utmost freedom, the utmost license rather than any censorship. Censorship is always bad, always ignorant. Now, whether the censor is a man of virtue like Emerson or a hypocrite seems to me to make no difference. The evil is always evil. I wrote Children of Adam to celebrate the eternal decency, glory, and wonder of our human forms. Was I to censor this celebration? Oh, my body, I dare not desert the likes of you and other men and women, nor the likes of the parts of you. I believe the likes of you are to stand or fall with the soul 
and that they are the soul. I believe the likes of you are to stand or fall with my poems, and that they are my poems. Man's, woman's, child's, youth's, wife's, husband's, mother's, father's, young man's, young woman's poems, head, neck, hair, ears, drop and tympan of the ears, eyes, eye fringes, iris of the eyes and the waking or sleeping of the lids, mouth, lips, teeth, tongue, roof of the mouth, jaws, jaw hinges, nose, nostrils of the nose and the partition, cheeks, temples, forehead, chin, throat, back of the neck, neck slew, strong shoulders, manly beard, scapula, hind shoulders, and the ample side round of the chest, upper arm, armpit, elbows, arm sinews and bones, wrist and wrist joints, hands, palms, knuckles, four fingers, finger joints, finger nails, broad breast front, curling hair of the breast, breast bone, breast side, ribs, belly, backbone, and the joints of the backbone, hips, hip sockets, hip strength, inward and outward round, man, balls, man, root, strong set of thighs, well carrying the trunk above, upper leg, under leg, ankle, instep, football, toes, heels, all attitudes all the shapeliness, all the belongings of my body or your body or anyone's body, male or female. The curious sympathy one feels when feeling with one's hand the naked meat of the body, the circling rivers, the breath, and breathing it in and out, the beauty of the waist and thence the hips and thence downward toward the knees, the thin red jellies within you and within me, the bones and the marrow in the bones, the exquisite realization of health. Oh, I say to you now, these are not the parts and poems of the body only, but of the soul. I say to you now, these are the soul. Well, how some people reel when I say this part, <laughs> or that part, or bare legs and belly. God, you might suppose I was citing some diabolical obscenity.